Hi, this is SP, and it feels good to be streaming and recording under the Better Podcasting banner again. Let me first address a few things. One, Better Podcasting is still on hiatus. Stephen and I have chatted and texted, and Better Podcasting will return someday. That's our plan in the near future. But right now, I have no further information on what that will look like or any timetable. In the meantime, we appreciate our audience reaching out to us, as many of you have, and thank you for listening and watching our back catalog. You can always find us on our Discord server at betterpodcasting.com slash Discord, and you can get in touch with us there if you need to. Two, in the meantime, I wanted to start streaming again on Tuesday nights, which was the night that Better Podcasting last streamed on. So in the interim, waiting for better podcasting to return, I came up with a collaborative idea to have other hobby podcasters come on the channel and chat with me about their experiences and their expertise. I plan on streaming these every Tuesday, holidays exceptional. And if you have any interest in chatting with me about your show or shows or networks and experiences, please send me a note and we'll see about arranging a time to have you on. If you want to use the time as a podcast consulting session, we can see about that too. I know a lot of brand new podcasters are looking for advice out there, so that would be applicable to a lot of our listener base. These will be bare bones productions with no music, no bumps, as little visual elements as I can get by with, probably no post video production, and I may upload these to a new RSS feed if there's any interest in it. And if there is, you'll have to let me know. And I will go ahead and release it on a separate feed. It won't be on the Better Podcasting live chat feed. It won't be on the Better Podcasting main feed. So if you want to have it, I can upload it to a new RSS feed and we can go from there. So this week, I decided to focus on an area neither Stephen nor I have a ton of experience with, the audio drama. A while back, we've had Sarah Ray Werner on Better Podcasting. But for this stream, I wanted to focus on somebody who took the bulls by the horn recently, built a brand, created and launched an amazing fictional audio drama, Universe 25. John S. Badger, he is the creator, writer, showrunner, and producer for Universe 25, and also runs the Mercury Theater podcast, basically one-shot audio drama podcast, as well as the weekly conversational podcast at the set with his lovely wife, Heidi. And he's agreed to join me today to give some of that valuable behind the scenes experience for Universe 25. John, thank you so much for joining me today. SP, it is a delight. I sound so, uh, so sophisticated, so busy. <laughs> you are busy. Either that or you've been taking a lot of uh, non legal substances to keep going. <laughs> you said the limit was three podcasts, so I figured two audio dramas and a regular podcast. That's that's it. <laughs> no, no, no. The limit is two oh, podcasts per it. week. If you do more than two podcasts per week, you're stretching the bounds, which I think you're still within because you don't release Mercury Theater podcasts in Universe Twenty Five in the same week, right? Uh, not really. I mean, Universe Twenty Five is continual. It's once a week for the uh, for the duration of the season so there's only one week that there's any overlap so technically there is a week in every month for like two months that i have uh three episodes three podcasts that come okay. out <laughs> so in the meantime you're in the middle of season one of universe 25 right now yes and yeah. you've taken your time to come out and talk with us about producing and show running basically an audio drum yeah yeah, I, I don't know where you, you want me to just run with this or. What well, I mean, there's so much to tell. Let's let's start with. Let's go back in time. And I kind of mentioned this to you before. Let's go back in time. 18 months ago, you still you have some podcasting ongoing, but you yeah. are in the planning stages for Universe 25. So talk to me about what you would tell yourself 18 months ago that would help you along the way. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> oh my god! Uh, if I had if I had known that I could, I how much time and effort would go into this, I would not have done it. But fortunately, I didn't know how much effort and time it would take, so I'm very happy doing this. But yeah, it's it's uh, time suck for sure. Um, I don't know. I think that just getting that experience and just figuring it out as I'm going along is huge because you can ask a ton of people to how to do something, but go to YouTube, like YouTube university is huge. Like if you can go to find out what your particular DAW is and see how somebody else does something and just replicate that and try to take that information and just kind of manipulate it to whatever your, your goal is. And then eventually Hopefully you'll find something that you like about it. So getting some experience before you actually do your dream project is probably preferable, which is kind of what you did. You do, you still do Mercury Theater podcast. So that yeah. helped you prepare for Universe 25, right? Oh, absolutely. If I, if I had gone into Universe 25, I would be so disappointed. Like originally, if that was my first uh, audio drama experience, I would be in season three of Universe 25, and I would be looking back at season one. And I'm like, I can't let anybody listen to that. <laughs> I would have so much remastering that would be absolutely necessary. And I still might, you know, in, in a couple of years, I'll look back at stuff that I'm doing now and I'll realize, oh, there's this thing that I could have done with it. But I'll have the uh, ability to do that now because... Like there's there's already stuff that's with season one that I want to to redo as soon as season one is out. My intention is to go right back into episode one and add a few things, do a couple tweaks. And because with podcasts, generally you can just edit it and then replace the audio that's out there with the new audio. And then it doesn't uh, doesn't affect anything except hopefully make it better. So you're going to George Lucas it. Oh yeah. Oh, but you saw, you saw what he did with those, those first three episodes and, and it's, you look back at it and I was like, this is not up to par with where it is right now. I mean, technology keeps on changing, but yeah, I, I guess so. Okay. <laughs> to answer that in the, in the yes. Yes. Well, that's kind of important to talk about. So I, chose 18 months to go back to for a reason because i know you were in the conceptual stage planning stage back then but when did you first start writing the script for universe 25 it was originally supposed to be an episode of mercury theater podcast and as you probably well know there's so much world building that's involved with it i was like well it's going to be at least three episodes just to build the world by itself so how am I going to do that and have it in Mercury Theater podcast? So it started out as an episode for that, but it's just it's so much information that's being processed. And I couldn't fit that into a single 30 minute thing. And then I realized, you know, this is a whole world. You can build your characters. And that's one of the drawbacks that I have for Mercury Theater podcast in that I introduce these characters. I introduce the story. I introduce all these these different elements to it. And within like, you know, like 20 to 30 minutes, you have your entire story. And, you know, at the end of the story, you're like, what have you lost? What have you gained? But with Universe 25, you have episodics. Or, so, you know, you get invested in these characters. You get to understand this, this seared scenario and get excited about it. And then get really frustrated when you lose something or when the characters lose something. But you wouldn't do that with Mercury Theater Podcast necessarily. So I don't know if that answers the question. <laughs> well, in a nutshell, with Mercury Theater Podcast, what you're talking about is like an old time radio drama would be accurate for it, right? So you have a recording session live in some cases, and bingo, that is your production. And with Universe 25, you're talking about more of what we think about with like a streaming show with like Netflix or with paramount plus or something like that you're talking about a shorter season of six to 12 episodes something like that then you're going to take a break and then obviously you have plans to come back for season two for universe 25 right now 
That and is the plan. It's the plan. So plans sometimes don't happen, but that's your plan right now. So what? How you said you mentioned you're going to take a break and remaster the episodes, but then you're going to start production on season two. So how long do you want to keep in between seasons? My goal is to have a season out a year until it doesn't make sense to keep on going. The goal isn't to just beat the dead horse, which a lot of a lot of shows do. Like they have really great premise. Like I don't know if if there's a fan of Game of Thrones out there, they know that season 9 is unwatchable. <laughs> but you well, get excited about the first few seasons and then you see it like just devolve and that's the goal is not to do that obviously i don't know if i told you this before or not but i made the decision at the episode called battle of the bastards that was a pretty good episode but i knew the trajectory of the show was going in a direction that i was not going to be happy getting to the ending for so i decided to quit at Battle of the Bastards, which I want to say it was season six. I could be mistaken on the exact season, but I got out before the fall of that whole series, and I was very happy that I did. Especially after season nine comes out and everybody's so disappointed about it. I know. Lost is another example of people not happy with the ending. So I've never watched Lost. I missed out on the whole hype of Lost, but I I will never go back and watch it again. I guess that's enough. I mean, we'll talk about this in the future sometime, maybe you and me, and maybe we'll share it with other people about sticking the landing and how important that is when you finally end it. And so we could talk about that in the future, but let's get back to how long does it take to create an episode? So you have Mercury Theater podcast, which releases once a month, right? Yeah. Or yeah, is supposed to at least. And no, then it, it has been. The the most recent episode was the first episode of Universe 25, so I just, I did some some editing of it, so it was more family-friendly, because Mercury Theater Podcast is a family-friendly, like, I the goal is to make it so that all the family can listen to it, but with Universe 25, not so much, and so I did some tweaking to it, and so that my listeners from Mercury Theater Podcast will be able to be introduced to the new series and then they can go into that so i wasn't having to make an entirely new episode but it'll continue come uh technically next month we'll return with the the next episode of mercury theater podcast so that that's several things that i wanted to talk to you about i wanted to talk to you about cross promotion and branding because you've established a brand for yourself out there And I wanted to talk to you about, let's get back to the amount of time it takes for an episode, because I podcast in a world where I do a weekly show and it's either a TV review show, a weekly geek news show, or a weekly podcasting show with better podcasting. That's the tempo that I'm used to, but you, and you do that too with at the set with your wife, you have a weekly show, so you know how to do that. But what you're doing with Mercury Theater Podcast and Universe 25 is two different ways that you can do an audio drama. And it takes a while to do that because you're talking about casting, recording, writing, uh, and post-production, sound design, everything in there. And you have a month to get an episode out of Mercury Theater Podcast. And you've had months to get the season ready for Universe 25. So if you could compare and contrast the two styles of audio dramas. And if you want to throw some stuff in with at the set, go ahead too. Okay. So Mercury theater podcast versus universe 25. See what the differences are. Yeah. So with Mercury theater podcast, I can write a single episode in, you know, say a couple days, right? So every, every minute equates to about an hour, uh, about a Every page equates to about a minute of of production. But with Mercury Theater Podcast, I can just write an episode. But with Universe 25, I have to write the entire season so that I can make sure that I'm putting in these Easter eggs early on in the season that are going to pay off in the next, in, you know, a few episodes down the road. And so there's, 
trying to make sure that there's consistency as well. But with Mercury Theater Podcast, I don't have to worry about any consistency whatsoever. Heck, there was one episode that was just one person who was just narrating a story, and that was the entire episode. But then I have other episodes where I have eight people cast in it. But with Universe 25, all of that was done in block recording. And I don't know if you're familiar with block recording, but it was done with scene partners, right? So scene partners, so I might have, there are a bunch of characters that I'm going to list off, but um, so Nicholas is one of the main characters. I had Nicholas and Aries, two main characters, had, had, uh, had scenes with the both of them recording and then i had it so that i had aries recording with aries and other people and then another day where i had nicholas and other people recording and i tried to make it so that it was as efficient as possible for all of the actors in that regard because they were actually coming to studio and recording simultaneously whereas with mercury theater podcast the recording of that is done all at the same time so if it's a an eight person episode then i'll have as many as possible in the same discord channel or server or whatever and we're all responding to each say we they're all responding to each other and the goal is to, as much as possible, get it so that they're responding to each other. Not just saying their lines, but they're able to say their lines and then have somebody else respond to that and then have it as natural as possible. Now, there are going to be certain times where there's, I'm not able to put all of those people in there at the same time because it just, you know, I might have eight people cast, but there's one person who's only going to say one or two lines. And then I'll have them say their lines individually, you know, if, if they're not available, if they just don't want to show up for the entire two hours of the recording for, um, for it done twice. But Universe 25, it was all done scene by scene according to who was available. So let's back up a second. You didn't have any venture capitalist funding for this. This is all out of your own pocket, right? For Universe yeah. 25 Do and Mercury. People get body. funding for this stuff. <laughs> I'm sure people pitch uh, and then they become part of Gimlet Studios or whatever and get funding to go out and do their projects. Actually, that's a whole subset of the Procaster, not the microphone, but the professional podcaster realm where people actually Hollywood it up and they pitch their idea for whatever it is. It could be an audio drama like Serial. Or it could be a talk show or something, and they just pitch right. the idea, and then they get paid to do that. I mean, that's the largely the New York podcasting scene is is big into that. There's I come to terms with the fact that there is this bubble of that out there, but I don't live in that world, and apparently neither you. Do you? So no. this is all out of our own pockets because we're basically, I, I don't want to demean you by saying this. I don't know if not this is all. demeaning to it's you or in, not, but indie productions, that's what it is. Yeah. Indie productions, we call it hobby podcasting on better podcasting, but yes, it's an independent production because you're not getting funding for anything. Yeah. So with that ground set, you've done the recording in person and via the internet and coming out of the post pandemic lockdown phase you know you can get together and record a lot of people recorded virtually for a while but now you have the option which do you prefer and i can guess your answer but what are some of the cons and pros of both to answer the uh, the, the biggest question i prefer to record in person i like the live recording i like being able to see that interaction between the not just the characters, but the the individuals themselves, the actors. It was it was a lot of fun to have that, and there was actually some fangirling that was going on in, in the studio too, because there were people who were like, "Oh, I saw some of your shows. I love I love seeing your shows. You're amazing!" and and it was really cool and to have them in studio. And I honestly, I just I based 
my casting off of if they fit the character, right? But I didn't know most of these other people, like how they actually have familiarity with like theater and everything. But but I loved seeing that that personal interaction that was going on. But with with Mercury Theater podcast, it is really nice to be able to get it all done. So in a span of two hours, I have a 30 minute episode all recorded. It's just a matter of now going into editing and that just that post production process. But with with Universe 25, it was scene by scene and then the the putting all the audio in the right locations and everything. That's a that's kind of a pain. But I would say that it's just it's more rewarding, I feel, to get it done. And also, I had full control with Universe 25. So all of my audio equipment is my audio equipment. And if there's a failure, it's because I like the technology failed and I'm able to get that response immediately. But doing it over like virtually, there's the potential of losing losing audio and or having clicks and stuff that you don't you don't pick up on and then they might they might be problems that you'll have to cover up with other audio or have them re-record it but with it done in person you're able like i had the headphones on the entire time and i'm able to hear where there's a there's a fault technically or um the more nuanced problems that I wouldn't necessarily pick up with doing it virtually. Let's talk about the casting for a while, because you've had the good fortune to bring in some tremendous voice acting talent, both with both shows. I've listened to both. I've heard some amazing acting and I've also heard some novice acting voice acting (laughs) that really sucked for the audio listener out there. That would be me. You did amazing. Uh huh. That's what. Yeah. Good boy. Good boy. I, I, we'll, we'll call you. Don't call us. I, I get it. But <laughs> where where do you find this talent? How do you bring them in? How do you treat the talent once you bring them in? Because you're going to do it in person or virtually together. You're a director at that point, and how do you treat the cast? But first of all, how do you find them? So with Mercury Theater Podcast, I found the vast majority of my voice actors on a site called casting call club or casting call dot club. And I've had really good success with that. And I had a lot of problems with that as well. And, but people get excited about voice acting and they immediately go on their cell phone and then record their, their audition. And then you hear it and you're like, this sounds like it's on a cell phone. And the first response, like for me as a director, if that character is not on a phone, then I cannot cast that person for that, that role. Right. But, you know, so audio quality is the very first thing that I notice. And you can have a, you can be really, really fantastic at acting, but I can't cast you unless your audio quality is good. And that's the problem with, um, with casting online. But I'm able to hear those auditions, usually from the microphones that they're going to use. But with doing that in Universe 25, I don't have to worry about audio quality. They can just show up and they use my microphones that I've already have already been proven uh, to be to be good or good enough. And so casting for Mercury Theater podcast, it was done through that. And then with the with Universe 25. I got a lot of success going on Facebook and going through. So I live in the Asheville area of North Carolina. And I joined the Asheville actors uh, group on Facebook. And then I was able to post a an ad kind of like an advertisement, but it's like it's an unpaid gig. Like you're not going to expect to get anything out of it, but you'll get that that um, that experience. Right. And actors, when they're first starting out, they want to get that experience and voice acting. So I was able to get one of my voice actors who is actually really prominent. He has, uh, you know, in the tens of thousands of followers. But this was his second voice acting uh, gig, right? 
And he realized that there is the potential of making a reel because he wants to do voice acting. And he was willing to take the the non-paid exposure just so he can get that exposure. And he has that ability to make like a demo reel so he can put it to other people when he is a, able to get paid for doing that. So Mercury Theater Podcast on castingcall.club and then with Mer- the Universe 25, it was done on a local Facebook group. And you locked all of your cast in with 10 year contracts, multiple season contracts. So of course they will come back no matter how popular that they, they get to work for you for free. So I actually, I, <laughs> this is a funny story. So the main character of Aries is played by Maximilian Coker and he is fantastic. And when I was hearing his voice, I was like, Oh my goodness, this, this is Aries. This is Aries. And then I said, so you're not planning on moving anytime soon or anything? And he's like, <sighs> I was like, oh, no, what 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 does that mean? Are you moving? And he said, yeah, so I'm actually going to be moving up to New York this summer. And I'm like, no, you can't do that. <laughs> because, I mean, he was too good not to cast as Aries. But with him moving up to New York, that's going to play a play a role into things but after having done season one or recording into season one and i i toyed with the idea of killing off his character and he looked at me very sternly he's like you don't kill that character i will be back and like i will i i have friends in the area i stay with them i will be back (laughs) and i was like okay well i guess i can't kill off the character so yeah i I have him for at least another (laughs) season based off of his experience he really liked doing it it was so much fun it it genuinely was a lot of fun to record with them so let's jump ahead we've done the recording and now you have the audio and the bane of a lot of podcasters. I mean, some people really enjoy it. I used to really enjoy it. I think it's a time sink. now. it's the post-production editing. And with an audio drama, you've got sound design, you've got multiple characters, you've got just so much more to creating that audio experience than a normal panel podcast is kind of like we're doing right here that it takes a long time to do. Right. Is there a question? Is there a question involved with that? Or it's just acknowledgement. The question is, what would you tell somebody that was interested in audio dramas or that currently does audio dramas about the post-processing editing, just different advice that you give them based off of your experience, both with Mercury theater podcasts and universe 25. Uh, oh, uh, noise reduction. Very first thing before you do anything else, do that noise reduction. Make sure that all the tracks have that noise reduction already done. And that way, when you're cutting all of the audio and you're splicing it all together and making sure that it's all uh, all cohesive, that you're not already too late into the process. Because once you've put it all together, and you've taken out all of the silences and everything, now you've lost all of that ability to do any noise reduction. Because if they're talking, you are already too late to do that that noise reduction. So uh, that's the very first thing. Uh, and yeah, I um, that would have been really nice for me to like really understand, like to understand, like fully comprehend before going into it. Because I have a lot of stuff. <laughs> I'm like, ah, oh, I forgot to do the noise reduction on that scene. So then I end up having to cover it up with one thing or another. Like whether it's music or sound effects or just uh, changing the the like I I'll do some voice modulation so that it sounds like they're in a completely different scenario, just so it sounds like the audio is intentionally done different. So that you don't notice the the noise reduction isn't done because listening to the AC and I'm sorry I've been I've been tempted all this time to turn off my AC because <laughs> it's probably showing up at the audio I I'll, I'll fix that but 
yeah, it's a. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so when you do that with uh, with the audio drama, then it, it helps to have that all reduced, all just taken out altogether to start off with. So pre-process the track to minimal sound, acceptable sound, because some scenes are different than others, as you pointed out. Sometimes you'd want to throw some more reverb in there to make the voice sound like it's in a cavern or on a microphone somewhere. So you can't completely process the track all the same but if you take the noise out and probably put it to a certain level to start with then that's half the battle right there half the battle half the battle of the uh, entire post-production there it is boom (laughs) well at least with that one track right so that one character's voice on that one track so pre-process and then we call it round tripping where you pre-process the track and then you bring it back in to the like DAW. You're, like you're de clipping and like clicking and all of those things that you do. And then because you just want to make sure that it's a clean palette. And then you can do all of the other things like doing making it sound like they're in a cavern or making it sound like they're on the on the TV or whatever. But yeah, I would I'd say clean it up first and then you can go into into making it a cohesive structure. How do you make a conversation sound like a conversation and not like somebody's reading off a of page? Acting, be a good actor. Um, <laughs> and if you if they're not a great actor, uh, cover it up with a bunch of typing. <laughs> Which would explain why all my scenes in your one Mercury Theater podcast episode, I'm always typing, or You're somebody's typing always the- typing in the background. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. It was, uh- no, you were a great, great actor. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, just, more typing, more typing. I, I wanted to make sure that, yeah. But honestly, so distracting away from certain things with certain audio things, right? Or just ambient noise. And, you know, I have two different types of microphones that I've been recording on for Universe 25. And I have the, the Rode Procaster, which is what I'm using right now. But then I also have the Deity S Mic 2. And that one's a shotgun mic. And I want to make sure that it sounds as natural as possible. And I did as much as I comprehend as it stands right now. But I can take some ambient noise, put it in the background, and just have it so that it it takes away from your your concentration on audio quality by having just random noises that make it sound like you're in the scene as opposed to it just being two people talking. And with with podcasting, that's the goal is to make it sound like like you and I are talking and that there's nothing else that we're worried about. We're not. No, hopefully you're not hearing me drink my water or anything. You're not hearing all of those noises. But with audio drama, the goal is to make it sound like you're in the situation as much as possible. So you've edited what you've got recorded, you've added the sound design. Let's talk about sound design for a second. Yeah. I mean, you talked about adding overlaying sounds, but there is a lot to sound design because you're trying to make it feel, trying to paint with audio the scene of where the people are. And there's just a lot that goes into that. So what are some tips and tricks that you've learned to make the sound bring the listener in to where it's supposed to be presented? I'm a fan of noise reduction. Do the noise reduction. (laughs) Make it sound like it's just whatever you're focused on. And I didn't understand this when I first first understood what what this medium was. But you want everything to sound just... You want to isolate whatever that sound is by itself. And then that way you're able to add it into whatever different environments it is so you can add all these different isolated sounds so it sounds like a certain environment that you're going for right so if you're going for a farm for instance so i'll go to a farm i'll record the sound of a goat i'll record the sound of a pig i'll record all these different individual sounds and then i'll go into post-production i'll do that noise reduction so that all I'm hearing is that goat, all I'm hearing is that pig, all I'm hearing is that horse or whatever. So I'm able to isolate those sounds and I can build a 
as much of a natural environment as much as possible, where it sounds so counterproductive because you're reducing all these different farm sounds. But if there are all these birds that are chirping and they're not supposed to be in the scene, now you've ruined the the environment that you're really trying to focus focus on, right? So um, taking all those those sounds, putting them together, and if it doesn't sound right, it's not right. It's kind of like who was it, Mi- Mi- uh, Michelangelo, who said you keep on chopping and like cutting into the marble until you get the the portrait or whatever it is. You know what I'm going for, right? Yeah, you're looking for the actual sculpture within the block of rock. Right. And whatever doesn't look like that, take that out. And then eventually you'll have the the figure that you're going for. And the same being true with audio design. If it doesn't sound right, then it isn't right. And you were talking you were asking earlier about conversations and making it sound natural and taking out all of these pauses. And there are a bunch of pauses that I I had one of my um, my voice actors just watching me do this because they're really fascinated by the whole process of audio editing, which is crazy. I was like, are you sure you even want to be up here? You could be downstairs hanging out with Heidi, but instead uh, they just wanted to hang out and see the audio editing happen, right? But where was I going with that? Sound design and making conversations sound natural. Yes. So I'm listening to it passively, right? So I might be playing golf on my on my phone and I'll be listening to it and then I'll notice certain pauses that are between in the dialogue between this one person and this next person and I'll go back and then I'll listen to just the pause and I'm like there're like 4 seconds that happen like it's just silent for 4 seconds so taking out all those pauses that aren't necessary and if it's supposed to be a pause, let that pause linger until it sounds like what you're looking for. And again, chiseling at what doesn't belong. And if, you know, with this, you're fortunately able to put back whatever marble you've chopped off. But yeah, make it sound natural. When I first started editing podcasts, I went overboard with the audacity truncate silence function where I put the silences to 0.3 seconds so people Uh, are talking like shotgun if you go listen to early episodes of legends of shield people are actually shotgunning and i'm like wow is this on like fast play or something no it's because i took out way too much now i quickly reverted to something that was more expansive i think i immediately after a couple weeks went to 0.5 seconds and then I went to 0.7 seconds for a while. Now I'm at point, if I use truncate silence in Audacity, I usually do one second. But then I listen back to the whole thing. And you're right. If there is supposed to be a pause, I put in more of a pause there, depending on who's talking, the tempo of conversation and everything. It could be as much as a second, an additional second, so two second, or it could be even longer, up to five seconds. And I think anything longer in an audio production that five seconds or longer, it's probably too much unless you've really hard hit the audience with something and you can let it linger for 10, 15 seconds. But that is like back in the old days when they taught writing, taught journalism, they said, okay, in your entire career, you get one punctuation point. That's it. One exclamation point, excuse me, not punctuation, one exclamation okay. point in your entire career. So you think in terms of you're going to start writing when you're 20, you retire when you're 60. So that's 40 years of writing. You get one exclamation point in that 40 years. It's kind of the same thing. You get one 15 second pause in your entire audio production career. So that's it. It's, you, I don't know if that's accurate or not, but that's how I want to phrase it. So, yes, I will agree with the pauses that you need to let them linger if they are supposed to linger. Because if you don't, somebody could be listening on uh, Overcast, which is a podcast app on iPhone right now. And you can set that to take out pauses. If you're listening that way, you're not going to hear the pause. But if you're listening natural or on another device that doesn't take out the pauses, you're going to hear the pause. 
And I know that's something that people on Netflix, uh, producers on Netflix have been fighting for a while because on Netflix, people want that speed up button that you have on YouTube to watch things at 1.5, two times faster or something like that. And Netflix has pushed back because the creators have pushed back and said, no, we're not going to do that. You can get around it. You can put a plug in in your Chrome browser and you can listen or watch stuff faster on Netflix or something like that if you're on a computer. But if you're on your TV, there's no way to do it. Uh, so as an audio drama creator, you probably want people to listen to it as you produced it. Yeah, it's not. I, I make a pod. I make a podcast at the set with with Heidi, but there are going to be longer pauses in that because it's a more natural conversation, right? But with Universe Twenty Five or Mercury Theater podcast, the goal is to make sure that I'm I'm hitting those punctuations exactly where they belong. And if people are listening to it, and this is it's so frustrating to know that you can listen to it at one point five speed, and I'm like, there are all these. All these different audio th- things, the, the whole scene is designed specifically to be listened to at 1.0 speed. It's just at regular speed because I've done so much processing and to, to make it as perfect as I, I know how at the time. And I can't imagine listening to audio drama any faster, but there are some audio dramas that that probably required <laughs> to be re- listened to at that speed. But yeah, it's a, uh, it's designed to be listened to at regular speed. And I can't imagine listen, like watching a TV show be without having those, like with having it at, at a faster speed. It just doesn't make sense. I've watched stuff up to 2.5 speed just because I'm watching it for review on Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. Oh, okay. and I might be watching it multiple times through. I always try to do it at least one times at 1x speed. But if I'm watching it again to take notes or something like that, I will watch it faster because I'm just trying to take it in over and over again. But it really comes down to the viewer or the listener's perspective on what they want to do with it. There used to be a big debate in podcasting a few years ago about designing a podcast to be listened to at 1.5 or 2x speed. And that kind of died on the vine because people are like, there's no way I can't design a podcast to be listened to at 1x, 1.5x, and 2x. I'm just going to design it to be listened to at 1x. If the listener can listen to it faster and still retain everything on that, that would be great. I used to listen to the Curiosity Daily podcast when Cody Goff and, uh, What's, what's her name? Um, I want to say Heidi, and that's wrong. Ashley. Ashley Hammer were on that. And they did a whole segment on retainability of the audio at faster speeds, and it does significantly drop off. So if you're listening to stuff at more than 1x, you're not really retaining any of it. Just for what it's worth. Well, well there go half your listeners. <laughs> I'm just kidding. They Wait didn't notice I have, it. <laughs> I have listeners. They didn't notice. It's fun. <laughs> All right. So let's go past. We've produced it. We've published it. Uh, we can skip over that. Let's talk about promotion. There should be a lot of similarities in the promotion of an audio drama as any other type of genre with the podcasting, but there's probably some specific things, do's and don'ts that you've run into. Aside from the fact that as podcast producers, we're all like, do we really have to promote? Yes, yes, you have to promote. We'll just skip over that part. So while you're promoting, whether it's your favorite thing or not, what are some do's and don'ts? It isn't my favorite thing. (laughs) Um, Do's and don'ts. Make sure that you're... So I have a different Instagram account for both, and I have a different Twitter account for both Universe 25 and Mercury Theater Podcast, right? And I have to make sure that everything that I do fits in the brand of the the series, like who you are actually trying to to reach, right? So Universe 25 might be a little bit more political than Mercury Theater Podcast. Mercury Theater Podcast is more focused on family. And Universe 25, more, more politics, more uh, social 
social, you know, current current goings on, right? What? There's more to it than a dystopian future? It, isn't that what we're living in right now? <laughs> we're living in the dystopian current and tomorrow is the future. But yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I try to make sure that I'm not I'm not losing my who I'm I'm going for by like if I went into Mercury Theater podcast and started focusing on the same people that Universe 25 does then I might lose people because it's like well that's not what I've been listening to and like so make sure that it fits your brand right uh there's a word again brand we'll come back to that yeah um, and then doing the same thing. So I do that with Instagram. I do that with Twitter and I have found myself really leaning more towards universe 25 because their current events are so easy to just, just make it into a, a, a post because it's all current. But with Mercury theater podcast, I might, I might take certain things and make hashtags or whatever to something that that seems like it's in the same realm. So I can take universe 25. I can say, this is, these are these different shows that seem like what I'm going for with universe 25, that whole genre, but with Mercury theater podcast, because it is every episode being an anthology, every episode's different. I'll try to post stuff for that similar to that particular episode. I don't know if that, that helps at all, but yeah. <laughs> do you do most of your promotion on social media or is there other methods of promotion that you've utilized? So I am just about to start with business cards. They are headed over and I'm, I'm really trying to focus on local, right? So if some people really want to listen or to participate in local events, whereas just going to Netflix and seeing something that's national, it's like, well, that's no, that or international or whatever. That's you're just one of a billion people, right? But with with local stuff, it's like you're actually supporting local artists and doing that. So promoting it locally as well. But yeah, I, I'll do that with business cards. But I don't know. I'm not. I'm not really huge on. I'm not super experienced, I should say, in promotion, and I'm just trying to like throw a bunch of <laughs> pasta at the wall and see what'll stick. <laughs> yeah, I'll come at it from a we'll different see. perspective. Uh, local, I never really tried the local scene, but I've tried in person. So I've gone to events, I've gone to comic cons, I've gone to uh, podcasting conventions, and I've met Did with people. Did you ever people. go to one? Ever go to a podcast event? <laughs> i've been to a few but yeah i was at the biggest one ever uh with podcast movement i think they're still branded as the biggest singular podcast convention i was there with you last oh year in 2021 goodness. and your lovely yeah. wife she was an excellent cook matter of fact it's a question i wanted to ask you do you think you or your wife is a better cook <laughs> um i'd rather get fed every so often so yeah heidi okay, heidi's so, definitely the better cook for sure yeah okay there you go there, yeah. there's the preference there but that sort of way of connecting with people i've done in person but you're talking Feeding about them. actually yeah <laughs> i've gone down that road before too but local i have not niched down to i want to promote something local usually i think of it in terms of I uh, need to do a local podcast to promote it locally, but you're right, especially with the theater crowd, they want to participate yeah. and listen to stuff local. So I can totally see that for an audio drama. What a great tip, because if you're doing an audio drama, it's not in Asheville, somewhere else in the country, promote yourself locally. But if you're in Asheville, promote Universe 25. Yeah. So with Mercury Theater Podcast, it's kind of had an identity crisis in that one, it doesn't really have any consistency with the series. Like, it, it's not a series. It's just every episode is entirely different. And you might you might hate the first episode that you listen to, but you might love the next episode if you get that far. But it's also done remotely, so I'm not able to really focus on that as being a local production because it's done like, yes, I 
I write it and I direct it. I'm doing all of the editing and everything, but it's not really local. But with Universe 25, it is 100% local. Uh, with a, yeah, there are only, only like two voices that aren't local, but they're not like figureheads in the, in the series. It's, it's definitely a local production. So I try to try to advertise it as a local thing. Is there anything that you do differently or really stuff that was positive and worked as you were leading up to launch that you would tell other people to do? Can I just say, I just, I, since the new uh, laws regarding cookies and everything on online, that has really screwed up my ability to do any advertising. And now I've realized that I can't do any advertising online, like on, like on Instagram or Facebook or anything, because they, they relied so heavily on cookies. And then now I can't, I, I put, I put money into trying to, trying to promote it because I just wanted more listeners. And I realized that uh, word of mouth is definitely the better way to go. So really focus on you know, getting your voice actors to really promote their uh, their product. Like they're they're doing the acting. Like get them to get excited about doing some promotion if you can. And then with um, yeah, I just I did a whole lot of promotion on like unpaid promotion on instagram and twitter and trying to like build that stuff and i've really used it to as a platform also to uplift other audio dramas so there are a few other audio dramas that i've like i'll post a bunch of stuff about and get people excited about other audio dramas and because i'm using one of my podcasts as that way to to mention it you know, maybe somebody will look at that as like, oh, they're promoting somebody else. It's kind of it. It's kind of kind of a way to advertise myself, and at the same time as promoting one hundred percent this other this other brand, this other other audio drama. So collaborations, whether the other audio dramas want it or not, is pretty successful. I will go back into my past with Voices of Defiance, and I would say the early 2010s, 20-teens, saw a real shift in Hollywood productions, and by Hollywood productions, I really mean anything that's TV or streaming, linear or streaming. So we were doing Voices of Defiance, and we saw unprecedented access to the creative and the on-screen talent for our podcast on Voices of Defiance. We had never seen anything like that before. Even Sean, my co-host for Voices of Defiance, who had done a podcast on Battlestar Galactica, they had access to some actors there, but they really had to work for it. We did not have to work to get actors on Voices of Defiance. We would basically go up to them on Twitter in, in DM, if possible, and or by recommendation from other actors that we've already had on the show, and we would get actors and creative members we had like sci-fi team members we had the showrunner ultimately on the show and and just about all the actors on the show that was unheard of at the time to get that so i could see that as hollywood is saying hey this is a great way to produce or promote why not us with independent or hobby podcasts it just makes sense yeah and the, the audio drama community is still really small, and we have a tendency to really promote each other's stuff. So you'll, some of them have a weekly thing where they're, they're like, hey, this is a list of five audio dramas you should definitely check out. And they're really good about promoting each other's products. And you know, every so often, you'll see that, that audio drama that's posting it, and you... It's kind of like how you'll never watch a Coca-Cola commercial and say, oh, I need to have a Coke right now. It's you just have that. It, it's, it exists in your brain somewhere. And then when you go shopping for something, you might say, hey, I'd like to grab a Coke. So you're going to grab Coke over Pepsi or, you know, RC Cola or whatever, because you have that that uh, that kind of in your brain that there's that thing that you you saw but 
yeah, then there, then there gets to be that brand loyalty and everything. But yeah, so getting that, getting your brand and getting that out there so that people see that and then you, they see all also what you're promoting and that's other audio dramas. There was the word again, branding, and I want to, I will huge. go into it. So not only are we talking about branding with the shows individually, but you've created a personal brand where you've created Mercury Theater podcast, you started to get a following, you created at the set and started again kind of a different following, but there was some crossover between the two. You talked about crossover before, and at the end of Universe 25, you're often promoting Mercury Theater podcast and vice versa. So with Universe 25, you have yet more added to your personal brand. That is a personal brand with you and these three shows. You've seen an increase of listeners throughout the years because you've continued to produce content and you've been able to cross promote between them. I've done the same thing all the way back to Starling Tribune Voices of Defiance and Legends of Shield, and then fast forward to Guinea Geek and Better Podcasting. I've kind of done the same thing myself. What is the secret to that yourself, or it was just haphazard of I continue to produce content and people just love it, so they keep on coming back for more? Audio drama has this weird, it's, it's a niche and you're not going to get, if you're not looking for audio drama, the likelihood of you finding it accidentally is going to be very small because one podcasts are, aren't one of those things that you accidentally stumble upon a podcast. You kind of look, seek it out. Right. But if you don't know what audio drama is, then it's hard to find it. So if somebody finds one, then they have. So I'll, I'll put one out and you know, you know, one of the best ways to podcast or to promote your podcast is by going on other podcasts and saying, Hey, I want to be on your, your podcast. I'd love to talk about X and then, you know, give something that somebody can, can use to, to their, their brand and their, and benefit them. But I'll use, I'll use my audio drama platform to say, Hey, there's this other audio drama that we're also doing. And that gives that opportunity for people to listen to their one audio drama that they're listening to and then get excited about another audio drama that they haven't been listening to yet. And I did that with a bunch of other audio dramas that I don't actually produce. And I don't know if you remember, but Mercury Theater Podcast had a, had a season when we were on hiatus and then we just um, we had a bunch of interviews with other producers and then got people excited about that. And we'll, uh, yeah, it's just podcasts are a great way to promote podcasts. All right. I'm going to close it down in a couple of minutes here, but if there's anything you haven't said yet that you want to say about audio dramas or podcasting in general, now's your chance. What do you have to say? Ooh, um, let me see if I didn't. Oh, um, Listen to the, the episode after you posted it. Um, it might not be too late to fix it. <laughs> uh, there have been a few instances where I'll listen to the episode. I think it's all perfect. I posted it and then I realize, oh, I must have made this really this really small adjustment right at the end there, like right before I, I saved the, the file and everything and realized that, you know, 98% of it moved over to this side. And now all of a sudden I have these two tracks that are just like intermingling where they do not belong. And then I have like either a really long pause. Actually, there was one episode of something that you're like, there's a really long pause. Oh, this was at a set. And I'm like, what is going on with that really long pause? I'm like, oh, dang it. I completely forgot. Like, I, I just, I missed that. And it was because I had, I moved most of the audio over to this one side and then there's just this this gap in it but listen to it and then if it's not it's not what you meant to put out fix it you you generally still can't i don't know if this is so i work with anchor i, I know everybody hates me everybody hates me but but with their their platform you can just take the audio and i don't know if this is applicable for like libsyn and and blueberry and everything else but can you go in with that after the fact and then just uh fix the audio 
So you can replace an audio file on Libsyn. There are sites out there that actually change the URL based off the file name. Mm -hmm. So the original file that you might have linked to, say, I, I can't remember exactly which one it is. I think it's iHeartRadio. So if you change the file name and you upload the new file name, that could change the redirect on the URL on iHeartRadio's site. But beyond that, and you can't force an upload to correct somebody that's already got the bad version. Right. Once they have the bad version, they have the, unless you take that podcast episode down, you republish it, you run the risk of striking the ire of the people that downloaded the first one. And now they have a second one. They're like, what the heck? We've done it before on Better Podcasting. Steven's uploaded a correction and literally in the title, it's an all bold correction. And then the rest of the podcast episode title so there's different ways to handle it. it really depends on what your personal opinion is i will tell you if you're an evergreen content i wouldn't worry about it and then eventually everybody that hits it is in the future we're talking post 30 days so you're talking 90 days a year from now two years from now they're going to get the new episode so it doesn't really matter right. but if all your downloads are literally within the first 36 hours you might treat it differently. Yeah. But I'll, I'll listen to it really early on and then I'll, I'll fix it. Like I only have, you know, say I, I might only have 20 downloads and then I'm able to fix that right away so that I don't, I don't get, you know, the next hundred or million people listening to this. I'd rather have the, the upset of 20 people, but I haven't had that because it just shows up as like, it just, it doesn't replace the audio that people have downloaded, like you said, but it does show up for the people who download it afterwards. And I'd rather, I'd rather the first few people get it, get that mistake and not everybody. We used to call it a collector's item. <laughs> it's not a coin. It's, it's supposed to be perfection. Um, and then, oh yeah. Uh, last, I guess this is lastly, but. You can get audio and put it over stuff and fix, you know, not fix mistakes, but cover them up. So you, I can get music or I can get, um, get ambient sounds and then make it so that if there's a click in, there are sometimes clicks that happen and you just don't catch it. And you could have the person re-record the entire thing or you just put some noise there that that covers up that click and then nobody will notice that there there is that noise so people get really creative with profanity like on deadliest catch for instance it's a lot of horns and you know boat sounds bells and stuff like that covering up the swear words and you're like what are all these noises going on <laughs> on that boat i mean boats are noisy to begin with right but it's an excessive amount and then you figure out well it's Whenever they're swearing, they just cover it up with that. So yeah, you can get creative in doing everything. Yeah. Well, John, thank you so much for coming on this chat with me. I really appreciate learning more about the audio dramas myself. And where can the audience find you? I have I have so many different accounts. Um, if they if they want to see what I'm currently into, you can go to at John S. Badger on Twitter. And that is, that's me personally. So I'll post a bunch of stuff about Universe 25. I'll post about Mercury Theater Podcast. But I have Twitter and Instagram for both of those. So, uh, but yeah, if, if you want links to everything else, you go to, uh, go to Twitter and John S. Badger. That'll, and I also do have MercuryTheaterPodcast.com. And theater is spelled both ways, so you're not going to make a mistake that way. But that way you can uh, you can see all the links to all the other stuff. So Universe 25 is linked in on there as well as at the set. And you can just, you know, hear, uh, hear the stuff. Thanks. All right. I look forward to it. I've got episode six coming up pretty soon. So episode five. I think episode five is already in my feed. I'm going to call you out on this. Pretty sure it is. Oh, you know what? It's that trailer. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, I I made a better trailer. <laughs> I was like, I have to put something better in here because people were just getting lost with the uh, the original trailer. But, yeah, well, you've done phenomenal work, and I look forward to hearing the rest of the season. Thanks for thank joining you. us tonight. You've done, uh, you've done amazing. Thanks, SB. Thanks for sticking with us until the end. If you like content like this, you can subscribe to this YouTube channel and please like the video. Steven and I would greatly appreciate it. Next week, I plan to stream and chat about another podcast genre that Steven and I have limited to no experience with. That's tabletop gaming. So please join me and Damien the DM from Aurelia Pod on Tuesday next week at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or Eastern Daylight Time. And feel free to join us in the live chat and ask any questions you have. We'll see you then. Bye.